after 10 o'clock Eastern time. And what this means is we go and check in on a man and see if he's done his burpees on his patio on his porch. How healthy is he? Nino, how healthy are you, sir? I'm very healthy, man. I'm very, very healthy because I, I, I fell asleep deeply. <laughs> okay. That's I all just woke up 10 minutes ago, man. Seriously? To go. Yeah. It's a man he's sick last night. Oh, wow. I mean, I'm sick last night. No, what? no, nothing, nothing bad. It's just, I, I want to tell you what was in me sick. So just watching, um, uh, watching, you know, TV and, uh, at midnight, Oof. just shopping and I, and I found Saving Private Ryan. Uh oh. So I started, I started watching Saving Private Ryan at midnight. Mm. So, you know, you know, yeah. and I, I always follow the rules, right? My, my buddy Beto told me, you know, you got to sleep eight hours, man. You cannot sleep six hours, man. It's, you know, 2 a.m., you know, you, you do the math. So I was just, just, got, just got out there, just took a shower. I'm ready to roll, man. Well, so where's your uh, where's your morning cup of coffee? Uh, where Where's the, the caffeine? No, I don't even have a morning cup of coffee, man. I got just water, man. Wow. Just got that cold shower, water, and then after this, I'm going to get my – Ginormous breakfast, of course. Yes, I'm not right. calling that a fasting thing that you, you know, when you eat every 12 to 14 hours. So, uh, a last meal was last night at what 8 p.m. Mm -hmm. So, I'm about to get it going in a, in a few minutes. Ginormous breakfast, okay. So, so we will we won't hold you from your ginormous breakfast, but what what I what I like to do is, is pick your brain. Because you get to bring a perspective from your house and uh -huh. where you are. And what I want to do is there's a lot of other stuff going on than just Major League Soccer, than just what's going on in Paris. You are one of the busiest men in show business. And you are calling matches from one planet to the next, and you're all over the place. And what I wanted to do was get your thoughts on soccer down there and soccer over there. Uh -huh. Because you look at Portugal, you know Libertadores and Sudamericana, and we got matchups coming up before the next time you and I get the chance to speak. So uh, what I wanted to do was uh, let everybody know what's going on inside your brain and what you're looking at these days so we all can take the journey with you. That's what I wanted to do this week. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Also, I, I can do that for you guys. And first off, I'm gonna I'm gonna show you something here before we start the conversation. Uh -oh. Because oh, you see my shirt? oh there's That's my Universitario de Porta shirt, a hundred year anniversary, August 7th, 1924. My team was founded, and uh and yesterday we got a spectacular celebration. Eighty thousand people showed out of the stadium. Uh, artists from everywhere in the uh, in the continent, uh, fireworks, a party. It was just you know all the legends, the alive legends, showed up to the um, to the stadium to the monumental, and uh, it was uh, it was a fantastic party. It was a fantastic party, and it just uh, it, it brings me so much joy and so much uh, memories um, about my team because uh, unlike any other any other soccer fan in the in the planet you know the you you your memories are coming from your dad taking you to the city right and um I, the, the crazy part is that my dad was a fan he's a fan of this team and uh all my three brothers were all fan of the same team but uh we never got to go to the stadium with my dad to watch the, his team wow it's crazy it was just you know you, we we follow the, the the tradition all the passion that my dad was talking about the his team, and um, we just fell in love with the same, same team as my dad. You know, my, my dad is, uh, is our hero. And um, I mean, we fell in love with the team without even going to the, to the stadium to watch his team. And uh, that's what it's uh, – I, I posted that yesterday. I was, you know, I was boiling yesterday. It was, it was so emotional yesterday. It was, it was great, man. It was great. I mean, 80,000 folks. And you're 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 crying like a baby, but that's what that means to you, though. I mean, but that's and that's just it. We always we have those teams that we attach to. Yours, you're wearing you're wearing the jersey this morning to let everybody know about Universitario. 
how are they how are they right now in season what are you pulling your hair out is everybody all all happy and hopping up and down what's going on with them this year it's it's actually we we couldn't dream a, a better season man we won the champ we are the current champions right i got my notifications of right. this alerts going from the four letter i know how this works <laughs> and uh and um we won the championship. We are the current champions. We won the Apertura, which is the, the, the first tournament of the year. And uh, we're in second place in the second tournament of the of the year. And uh, we're arch rivals. We're arch rivals. They hate us so much. They hate us so much. <laughs> they lost their coach. They lost the we, they lost the classical. They fired the coach last year. They fired the coach this year. They got uh, they got all sorts of troubles, man. And you know what they did? You know what they did yesterday? This is how, how low class is this current front office of Alianza Lima, which is are the, the arch rivals. Every every team in the country, and even Infantino sent a message to us, right? Uh, and I recognize us as the uh, winning team in the uh, in the country. You know what they did last night? What? That was just so, so low, man. Their anniversaries in uh they're what is it? Twenty-three years older than us. They are nineteen oh one. We're nineteen twenty-four. At nine oh one exactly, their CM posted uh, congratulations to Junior de Barranquilla, which is the team from Colombia. They also got an anniversary yesterday. Congratulations to this other team. Uh, not with the Federation of something. And on, 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 on. Ah, oh, Universitario, yeah, that, you too. Like the, in third place. It's 100 years, man. <laughs> just, just just, show some class, man. Yeah. Show some class and show some respect, you know. We we respect you. When, when, when you got your 100 years, all right, everybody says congratulations, la, la, la. And no, they hate us so much. And that's why I like it, man. I, I love it. I love it. I enjoy it so much every time they win, we, we, we beat them. That's why... They get this, to deserve all the, uh, you know, the trash talking that we go against them. Man. Yeah, the the way that things currently are right now in uh, in Liga One, you're two points back after five matches. Alian Zalima four zero and one. You and Sporting Cristal have each lost a match in your first five, so that's why you're two points back. And uh, this weekend, you have a match against Sport Huancayo. Yeah, and, in Huancayo. And and uh, Alian Zalima has a matchup against uh, Tarma this weekend uh, yes. to, to take care of what's going on Hard. in the league. Uh, when it comes to the league in and of itself, who would you recommend? I'm going to have you put on your player personnel hat. I'm going uh -huh. to have you put on your general manager hat. Yeah. Who, is, who are some of the players in the league? And, and if you want to, to take players from Universitario, you can, but uh, yeah. I know I'm going to keep that roster as locked in as possible. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Who are some of the players in the league that when we watch, we drift in, we sit there and we watch the matchups, who are some of the folks to gravitate toward and who are some of the folks in the league that could leave there, maybe come to Major League Soccer, do well in a new environment? Who are some of the studs and stars in the league right now? Uh, well, there are a couple – from Sporting Cristal, but one I think he will go to, to the MLS because he's 37 years old. But his name is Martin Cauterucho, right? Get this, he has 26 goals, right? And he got injured for like two months. He has a, twice as much goals as, as any other player in the league. 26, and the next one has 13. <laughs> Six goals, it's crazy. He's on page. He's on pace to break the record of 40 goals in one season. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm pretty sure that he's going to do it because he scores every time he plays, he scores doubles or hat tricks, or it's just insane. And, and, and the, the, the crazy part is the positioning of this guy. You always say about these the strikers, right? Oh, the ball always comes to him. Now, I want to say 100% of the times the ball comes to this guy. <laughs> he's just so, so cool. He just like you, you, you see the guy, you see the guy, he's just walking in the air, you know. He just oh, got the ball, Tuck. effortless, effortless goals. And every single, I don't think he got 
I don't think he jumped on any any header that he got on, on this season. He doesn't even jump. He's like, fuck, fuck. And uh, just, it's like, oh, we scored two goals and got a hat trick. And uh, it's, it's insane. Now, the other player from the same team is Santiago Gonzalez uh, from Argentina. That was a great, great work in scouting from Sporting Cristal. Uh, the guy is the um, probably the best winger in the nation right now. He he's so talented. He's so deep. He's just he carries the team in offense uh, from Sporting Cristal. That that's the, those are the two players that, I, that I'm excited to watch on this uh, on this season. Uh, all the players that are there from the Estero Deportes. Da, 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 da. I love the way. I love the way that Jairo Concha is elevating his game because when we when we signed him at the beginning of the season, uh, we knew that he's incons- inconsistent, but he's so talented, right? His highs are really high, but his lows are really low. That's that's the only you know bad thing that we can we can get out of the out of Jairo. But now in this second half of the year, he is carrying the team. He he's leading the team. Uh, because we lost uh, Piero Quispe, who was our playmaker last season. Okay, he was fantastic, and he went to Pumas in um, in the Liga MX. And uh, we were kind of lacking that attacking midfielder, that that player that uh, you know you know dictates the tempo in offense. Uh, we were not having that, and uh, we came, we hired two players, you know, to replace one. Was uh, one is uh, Canchita Gonzalez who, by the way, ended his contract with us and ended up going back to Sporting Cristal after the, the apertura in uh, Jairo Concha. In, in Concha was not that super player that we were expecting to be in, in the first half of the season. But now, after five rounds, we can say that uh, we can trust in Jairo in offense. You you wanted to talk a little bit of uh, the the five ring circus. You wanted to talk a little bit about the Olympics and everything and medals and and that kind of thing. What's on your mind with what's going on in Paris? For the first time in thirty two years, my beloved Peru got a medal, a bronze medal in sailing. It was it was it was just so emotional because we lost the uh, in, in surfing the day before. The day before we lost in surfing, our guy Alonso Correa got into the semifinals, and uh, the, the semifinals were delayed in Tahiti because of the weather. The the, the after a first half that uh, of the uh, of the tournament that it was the, the the waves was were spectacular, so high, and it went flat. It was so flat that there's no waves, guys. We cannot compete. No waves. No waves. No waves. Then finally, waves showed up. In uh, but they, they were not that big as, as as they were in the first half of the uh, of this uh, of this Olympics. But he he did what he could. But uh, it was a little bit of controversy, right? Because uh, they gave him um, the priority. You know, in surfing, you you get the priority. You you take the the waves first, and then the other guy takes the waves. No? Yeah. And then it was his turn to take the priority with ten minutes to go. And they were like, no, we're going to give it the prayer to the other guy. What? No. no. <laughs> we were just crazy. He ended up in fourth place. But uh, he, uh, to be honest, and not because I'm Peruvian, but uh, I, I thought he deserved better. He, he could have had the bronze easily. He could have had the bronze easily. But we got the bronze yesterday on sailing with uh, Stefano Pesquera. And you know what was so amazing? That that guy is an Universitario Deportes fan. On the day of the 100-year anniversary of Universidad de Deportes, an Universidad de Deportes fan gets the medal for Peru after 32 years, man. <laughs> yeah, isn't, isn't that beautiful, man? <laughs> everything, everything comes full circle, brother. You know that. If, 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 if life is meant to be, when it comes to a circle, you're going to get that moment where everything works its way and the universe goes as it should. And, and it ends up that way for you in, in Peru getting a medal in Paris. And, and when, when, a, when, a, when a nation gets a medal and it's in something that's new or they get that kind of experience, you love to see the reaction from the athlete because the athlete knows 
how much time that has been invested and everyone back home knows what's been invested that those to me are the moments that are the, the moments of cool. When, when you yeah. finally get that, that the relief that all of the effort has shown itself into a medal for a country. Well, like you saying, Bob said, you know, you, you work four years for 90, for 90 seconds, for nine seconds, no 90, for nine seconds, 90 seconds, not 90, no, for nine seconds. And I tell you about the nine seconds. Remember I told you that no one was going to run a sub nine, seven in the hundred meters. I said that. Mm -hmm. And what happened? 9.79 was the winner for Noah Lyle. So no sub nine, seven for any uh, sprinter on this Olympics, as I predicted. I'm well, sure. well, and the folks that made that purple track, they're like, no, it's going to be faster. It's going to be two. It's going to, you're going to see two tenths faster. We ain't, nah. seen, we ain't seen none of that. No, no, no. And of course the, 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 the tragic, you know, it's, it's not, it's not a tragedy, but, uh, Another controversy for for this Olympics, man. How many controversial situations have we had on this on this one? It's just oh, ridiculous. Brother. Not letting, not letting, uh, Shakira Richardson and 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 uh, Shelia Fraser Price to enter the stadium on time to do the proper warm up for the hundred meter finals. That, that was the most expected, you know, race in in track and field. And the two biggest superstars, yeah, mm. not getting in because they're not arriving in the, in the Olympic boss. Come on, I was so mad. But uh, at the same time, I congratulations to the the, the girl. I forgot her name. I apologize for her name, Lucy, mm -hmm. to win the hundred in, in a spectacular fashion. Huh? Spectacular yeah. fashion. And to and to that point, you mentioned you know Saint Lucia getting a medal, and uh, that to me, like I said. When you get the when you get the nations that get the medal for the first time, or the the obscure nation that gets a medal, to me, that's why I, I like watching. But I'm I'm locked in. I will say this, I'm I'm locked into Gold Zone that Peacock has up here in the United States. Basically, it's a Red Zone channel where they go from event to event to event to event. They got a guy. They have guys in studio, and it's like, oh, let's go here. We've got a gold medal alert. We're gonna go watch this. We're gonna go. We're gonna. Yeah. They, they switch from event to event to event. I got locked in. I'm not watching anything live except that because it's fast food. It's like, oh, we're going to we're going to ping pong or sorry, table tennis. We're going to table tennis. There's a medal. We're going to beach volleyball. Here's a medal. So bang, 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 bang. And I'm catching. I don't have to watch it at night anymore because I'm watching everything going on day side with uh, with uh, rapid fire. You know, bang, bang, bang. Give me my, give nice. me. My oh, yeah. One of the first things that uh, NBC has done right in a long time. Uh our, our buddy Nino hanging out with us here. We woke him up on a Thursday to get his Thursday know, thoughts because he stayed up late watching Saving Private Ryan. Uh, Ten time. But yeah, I mean, I get it. No, absolutely. You know, you stay you stay up late and uh, you get locked into a movie and then you pay for it all day the the rest of the day. Um, when it comes to your time at Gold TV, how many different leagues do you call matches for? this time of year uh august is uh this weekend starts everybody it's we're in full force so we're going all in with liga portugal liga pro ecuador uh, the peruvian league uh, the uruguayan league and the um what is this super cup uh dutch super cup which just that i just called last weekend so in average in average um i do about 250 260 games a year man of of what probably a dozen leagues by the time you're done because you ri you ripped off five that you're doing right now so you figure what a dozen different leagues by the time you're done in a year yeah could be yeah yeah Not, how do you well first and foremost how do you keep it all straight and because i know that there are uh, young announcers out there that that listen that watch how do you keep it straight with all of these leagues i know that a lot of your time is spent in south america and south american leagues how do you keep all of your information straight and how do you make sure that uh, you're locked in on that particular league at that particular time take me through what it's like for you to prep for a match wow a uh, first off when when i it's crazy when i call when i call games i got like five or six screens open 
at the at the same time when I'm calling the game. I got like the three or four for the um uh, for the stats. I got the two for the previews, and I I got one more that uh they gave me on the uh at the station, right? And uh, I every time, every game, every day, every day. So let's see. Sometimes I got like three. Sometimes I got four. The most games that I had in one day is four. But uh, sometimes I got uh, three, three, two. So in a week, and I, I do eight games, right? So I get up early, get my you know my breakfast, my workout ready, and then getting all the information, getting all the information on, on, on my laptop, and I got to fire up every every single number or story or whatever I need to get, I got to write there on, on my screen. And then I write my, my uh, what is this, my, not my resume, my, uh, what is this, the uh, sketch for every for every game. I, gotta, I, write, it, I write it down. Mm-hmm. And I have this, um, this app that is awesome for uh, for for announcers, which is uh, it's in Spanish, of course. La Pizarra del Mister, that's what it's called. Maybe it's la, the, the the board of the coach. That's what it's called. And uh, it shows you the. I think I can do. I can do share screen. Let me let me show it to you. Oh, he tried to share the screen and he bumped himself out. Because uh, uh, Nino Nino's trying to. Uh, let a, I, what I wanted to do, considering that Nino does five, six games, and you said eight. I mean, he'll do like eight matches in a weekend at Gold TV. And uh, it's, you know, it is crazy that you can do eight matches in a weekend where you're doing like 3-3-2 three, three, two, or 2-3-3, two, three, three, two on a Friday. Uh, you go back to back. Then you end up doing three, like one, four, and seven. And then another three at one, four, and seven, or twelve, three, and six, or what have you for for those kinds of things. But I, I wanted to kind of get uh, you know Nino's thoughts on how he how he does things. You tried to share a screen and the, and the, the sh- and I closed the screen. I closed the window. It happens to me. <laughs> you know what I hate It's when I close the window that I need the most during the games. Mm-hmm. It's, it's it's insane. Man. All right, let me see the percent. Uh, get here. Da, 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 share screen. Share screen. Let's see if it works. Share the screen. Let's see if it plays. Yeah. Is it going to play nice? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, uh, but yeah, I mean that we we have. Oh, okay. All right. So let me see what you we see got. Now? I, let me see if we got the third one. Uh, it is. It is. Looks like it's loading on my end. Yeah. So when it pops, when it pops up, we'll show it before we get out of here. But it, yeah. Okay. There we go. All right. So here is. There you go. There's the. La Pisada del Mister. There you go. Right. And then I have the, uh, as you can see, I can name, the, I put the, all the names in there. Okay. Right. This is the, the two formations. And, uh, and I got that on my screen. So I got the, when I got the formations, I just put it in there. And then I got need to make substitutions. I'll do it there. And I got that guidance on my laptop as I'm calling the games. That's, uh, it's really helpful, man. So when so when you when you're calling a match, are are you calling it off of a, are you calling it off of like a big monitor or a small? Yeah. Or how big a monitor are we talking? It is as big. It's like a sixty inches. Yeah, because when Jason and I do matches and we do them in a studio setting, uh, I'll look at it and I'll go, okay, I've got this is the one that controls the broadcast. I've got a laptop. I have two laptops. I can do stats and games and everything, but I'll look off to my left and I've got my big 55, 60 inch monitor and I'll turn and I'll do it off of that monitor. And because I have progressive lenses, just call them bifocals. I love how the, the ophthalmologist, the eye doctor sits there. We're giving you progressive lenses. It's like, like, just call them bifocals, man. Look, I'm old. I, I get it. So, but yeah, I'll call, I'll wear my bifocals and I'll call it off the big monitor. And so I've got, you know, three, three other computers fired up at the same time. So uh, that's why I wanted to kind of compare notes with you as to how you do it and let uh, announcers who might be watching or who want to be, uh, who want to continue to grow their careers. I wanted to get your perspective 
as to how you call it, because everyone's version is different. And I just wanted to let everybody know how you call a match. When they watch you on Gold TV, subtle plug, and, and they they hear you going after officials and players and and you 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 take no ish, man. I mean, you sit there, you're you're looking at what's going on in the field. Something irks you, something gets you mad. And you 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 suffer no fools, and it's like, oh man, why? You, well, no, you get up. That's not a foul, you know. Those kind. The, I love, I yeah. love, it. I love it the way you talk back to the action because you don't you don't take any crap from anybody. I, I don't, man. I don't. I, I don't care. I call us a CDs. I always say the, um, during the broadcast, uh, I'll tell the guys, you know, guys, that I, uh, forgive me to the Benfica fans or the sporting fans. I'm not going to sugarcoat it for you, man. If, if I see something wrong with your team, I'm going to tell it. And I'm going to tell you how it is. I'm not going to say, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to tell you anything that is not on your screen. Because I want to look like a fool because I'm telling you, oh, no, that was not this and that was not that. No, 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 no. I'm going to tell you how it is, baby. How to tell you how it is. And that's my, um, that's the way I do it. And you're adding Portugal, you're adding the Portuguese first division this week, right? Yes. Tomorrow we're kicking off the uh, the season with the reigning champion sporting uh, versus Rio Ave. It goes at 3 p.m. Eastern time. Uh, you still one hour ahead, right? You still what you got 10? Yes, you got 10 30 over there, right? Yep, 10 30. Yeah, we got we got 9 30. I was gonna say two, but uh, yeah, it's uh 3 p.m. Eastern time, and they just played the super cup against Porto 4 3. 4 3 Porto won. They make a comeback from a 3 nail deficit in the first half, and um, it, it's gonna be it's gonna be so exciting to see. It's if for the first time since I'm calling the league, we're going to see a repeat. Because since I'm calling the league, 2019, I started calling this league. And uh, no one has repeat the title. No one. Uh -huh. It's Befica Porto Sporting, Befica Porto Sporting. Uh -huh. uh, the three times, you know, six titles in between the, the three. And uh, it was crazy because before... That's why the, the, the sporting fans love me. <laughs> because before I started calling the league, their team didn't win it for 19 years. The first title, the, the, the last title I won was in 2002. And since I'm calling the league, they won twice, 2021 and 2023. Mm -hmm. and they, yeah. <laughs> uh, when next week we'll have Copa Libertadores, Copa Sudamericana to talk about because that is – uh let's see what's today thursday i think tuesday wednesday next week tuesday wednesday thursday we'll have copa america copa sudamericana to talk about all all the things uh as always my friend it's great to see you and uh please go get your your ginormous breakfast and do your burpees and blow out the calories and be the the hulking mass of humanity that you are calling eight matches and that's another question for a later time that i want to get into is how you keep your voice and because so how you don't blow it out and how you you manage through a weekend that's uh because i know that a lot of young play-by-play -play guys they'll go way up and if they end up having to call two or three like you voice is gone by match number three and then the, the next two days are messed up i want to get into that too and so we can help out young announcers as we go uh, he, uh as always my friend great to see you and uh, go get your breakfast, and we'll catch up with you again next week. Copa Libertadores, Sudamericana, anything else on your mind? Helping young announcers, and we'll rock and roll. Love to see Ooh. you. Fully loaded. Fully loaded, John. Thank you. Appreciate it. See you guys next week. All right. Fully loaded, Nino. And I, I, I love that I love that we can we can bring Nino in to talk stuff. And you know what? I may as well just go ahead and call the segment Fully Loaded. We're going to call the segment Fully Loaded from now on. Literally. We're going to go fully loaded with, with Nino Torres. And, you know, because it's Thursdays with Nico. Nico's coming up in a bit, and we're going to talk Leagues Cup and everything Major League Soccer. But we're going to go fully loaded with Nino from now on. Guaranteed. That is the name of the segment. Fully loaded with Nino.